Yeah, welcome to another um, episode of the Intelligent Document Processing Podcast. I'm Oliver, the founder and CEO of Fireshift, and I have with me today Andre Bieler, who is heading machine learning, uh, all sort, all kinds of machine learning initiatives at at Parashift. Um, you actually were the main, or the, you are the main guy uh, for AI uh, at Parashift, and um, you're also have been the first guy uh, that takes care of AI. Um, I think you were, we were actually were doing another podcast where you and Mattia were talking yep. about AI topics, and I thought it would be a good idea that we, um, yeah, wrap it up a bit um, as there's um, a a new AI summer AI. Uh, Fre fr fr frenzy um, craze going on. Um, Funny enough, there was a AI winter predicted. And yeah, I think actually the the opposite is happening. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Let's hope the climate models are better then. <laughs> well, this is an episode without much conception, uh, without much preparation. It's just two weird guys uh, talking about tech, about perception of tech. Um, so if you don't like this, this is the moment to switch off. Um, uh, if you like it, then stay tuned. Um, <laughs> I expect this to be both funny, bizarre, and informative. So, um, yeah, nice to have you here. Yeah. Um, Thanks for having me. Um, I, I, I want to start with a little, with a little anecdote. Um, actually, when we started um, uh, a power shift, um, my mother came came to me one day and and said, "Well, are, what are you doing now um, uh, with this company? I heard this is artificial intelligence." I said, "Yeah, um, we're doing things with documents and the machine learns and said." And then she was okay, interesting. You, you can see in the phrase that things were working in the brain, and then out of a sudden she asked me, "Are you talking?" to the artificial intelligence sometimes? And I say, no, <laughs> that's not how, how shit works. It's actually, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's not It's not the way it works. And then, um, so why I'm telling this is that I think uh, a, a lot of people have this expectation that you should be able to talk to, um, uh, to, or, uh, to the artificial intelligence. Uh, the, so that's sort of a counterpart. And I think this whole narrative that's, that was looming, or this expectation that was looming, is actually very well fulfilled by, by what OpenAI did with the ChatGPT thing. Because you now can actually start to uh, talk to AI in a way that, um, yeah, that comes closer to a real perception of talking to somebody. Yeah, I agree. I think what what we know about people is that they're mostly interested in people. So if you, even if you look what we do in space research, we look for life that is similar to us. We always try to find something that's similar to us. And I think the, this natural interactive um, environment with the, with a chat, just with natural language is exactly like this. It feels like a human, like people give it a name, like they talk to it, they say, mm -hmm. please, and could you, and whatever, they talk to it like a real person. So I think that's also a big part of the, of, of the real appeal of this thing, just because you yeah, it's it's something human-like. It's not like an abstract machine that spits out numbers or these specialized cases. So yeah, that's I think that's one of the biggest um, reasons why this is taking off so so, so hard. So that yeah, actually that's it's, it's more an emotional part that fooled all the business people to write LinkedIn posts. They <laughs> not I mean, it's 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 excellent. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. It's it's all right. Okay. But what do you think? Is that like the model of the future to to use software, um, having con conversations? I I don't know. I th I think it's it it will be for a lot, yeah, because you can get very far with this. Like you can like for example, me when I do coding, I use it almost every day now for coding, and you get pretty far with uh, some instructions. You, then you usually have to tweak. I'm not sure. I mean, that's a, the beautiful thing about natural language is that it's it can be beautiful, it can be precise, but it can also be unprecise. So I think it it will either then need some kind of specialized language still, because otherwise there's a lot of ambigu ambiguities, ambiguities <laughs> in the English language or any any type of language which which if you write, for example, for coding, you need precise um, things. 
like any precise instructions and sometimes small details matter that you cannot that you cannot actually grasp in a natural language it's very hard or much mm. more effort but yeah i think it, it'll be an interactive thing and it's actually super impressive how even now with, with gpt4 how imprecise you can be and it's still um, interpolates or extrapolates to what you actually want because I think probably most people talk the same way and because it has so many examples that it can actually actually figure out what <laughs> what what you meant so it, mm. it's it's sometimes you are very precise and it still doesn't get it right but sometimes it's really amazing when you're actually not precise at all but it it just does what what, what you want it to do so I think it'll be still an iterative thing because the Sometimes you you need at least for certain tasks you need to to be able to give some feedback. But yeah, there, I think that's also pretty pretty big um, um, research or development area. What what they're doing, kind of these interactive um, kind of tools to use it interactively, not just like this round base, but a more like yeah. direct yeah. direct approach. So that's it's going to be super exciting for dashboards or so. So they they're working on. Um, on kind of AI whiteboards where it can interactively, uh, dynamically change stuff uh, together with the AI. And so that's, that's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I, I mean, I, I, I look at the whole development in, well, with both, I think with both excitement and, uh, and, and the anxiety some, somehow, because, you know, um, what we saw multiple times that with AI winter and AI summer periods that actually there was, there's a lot of expectations from, from AI and then that gets translated into customer needs and these customers come to vendors such as, uh, as we are one. And then, um, they're, well, they're asking, how can this be so complicated? Why doesn't it just work out of the box? And if you have the technological dimension behind that, do you think what the hell, what we can deliver is already very good, but, um, it just we're just not there where every everything is like uh, like solved and um so i fear a bit that after a period of of party um things will cool off and then it will fall back on us or how do you see this or are we i mean is the prediction of ai winter uh eventually probably um right uh it just yeah it, <laughs> it it's just like <laughs> I don't think so. It, it reached, I think, now a threshold and it reached so many people yeah. that I, you can put the genie back in the bottle, I think, now. It's it's become obvious and it's at the quality now that, that people can use it for so many tasks. It's like this whole language thing, but there's music, uh, medical uh, um, applications. There's so many. And I think this, just this spark of also kind of the inspiration even if it's not like able to solve your problem like gpd4 now it's kind of still i think inspirational to a lot of people to drive for uh whatever tool they need or whatever niche a niche uh, thing they have that is maybe not language related so yeah um i don't i don't see uh ai winter coming per se maybe well you never know what regulators do yeah <laughs> so True. or what is necessary to do i mean yeah. I, I'm an optimist, so I, I see the, 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 the upsides of this, like what could you solve, but there's uh, not a less nicer people than the two of us, which would, <laughs> uh, which would have maybe bad intentions. So yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't think it will be, it will be an AI winter, but maybe, maybe if regulations, maybe if it gets too out of control, too crazy and, and too many bad actors get their hands on it and actually do harmful stuff with it it might just be regulated in a way that it's yeah. that it's maybe less usable or less like cooled off or i mean also people change their minds i mean it also goes in wave right sometimes um in in past years people are supernatural then you get industrialized and people trust technology and now it's actually on the way back everyone wants to sound yeah. their own like natural yeah. stuff yeah so um <laughs> i think now they they trust the machine like if they ask ChatGPT for uh, for something, they trust the results, but I, I'm sure it will turn. They will say, oh, this is a whole, the the lizard people have programmed GPT-4 yeah. or GPT-6, <laughs> and now it's just programmed to brainwash you and they will not trust anything any yeah. of these machines will spit out. So 
who knows yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah just because you don't you're not paranoid that doesn't mean they're not after you so <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> well okay um so, so I, I, what do I find remarkable? I, I remember like one and a half or two years ago, we, we, we brushed out the, the term AI from all of our website because we were thinking like this is like a, a bad word and it's too much exploitation. So it, we were talking about machine learning and I quickly learned the past two week, past couple of months, but that we actually need to talk about AI. And I, and I have some, some, some VCs calling, well, you're an AI company. That's interesting. Can we talk? So I think that's a. Yeah, it's a good spot for us. But how how do you see the impact of of uh, of, of LLMs um, with regards to intelligent document processing? Um, um, so by the way, it's LLMs as well. In it's LLM in English, right? LLM. It's LLM in LLM in German. Um, uh, there's. There's certainly lots of use cases for them, especially for like these, um, obviously documents that are actually language based, like contracts or legal documents, medical records, where it's actually like text, but there's also a lot of places where you, if you look at documents, like an invoice, it's barely text, right? It's numbers and keywords and all over the place. So there's a block over here, then one down there, then there's a table, uh, for which LLMs, I would say isn't, aren't the, the first choice. Because um, it it um, it just relies on this like reading kind of nature um, of documents, and for all of these purposes, it's 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 obviously a great choice, like summarization or whatever, or mm. all these all these the models, the generative models that we see now that you need for this. But on the other hand, other other hand, um, for a lot of tasks, you don't need the generative part of the model. So. Like for people who, who are not familiar, you can have like two types in these models. You can have an encoder who takes an input and encodes it into a numerical representation. Some you can you can think of it as an abstract um, abstract representation of your input, and then you have a decoder who takes that input and generates some output with it. And what G GPT does is it only has the second part. Actually, it, it completely got a, got away with the encoder. It just feeds your whole. Um, your whole input into it, and then it it starts generating. But for a lot of things, um, you don't need it. For example, if you want to identify a, an interesting area in a document, you don't need to generate the text. You mm. can just point mm. at the place on the document. For this, you don't need the, the actual generative part. So I think there's there's lots of use cases where it's inevitable uh, to use it, and and there's other use cases for which it's not not really necessary because it just adds complexity and it's these generative models, they, they run sequ uh, sequentially, so they produce one word at a time. And so you have to run the whole thing through the model again and again and again. So they are way slower than if you just pass uh, the document, uh, for example, through the model and it just points to the right uh, the right place. Yeah. So it's it's super exciting. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that this um, uh, decoder only approach of GPT is so powerful that they just say, well, fuck the, uh, the <laughs> encoder uh, part and just uh, feed it everything. And yeah, it's, 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 it's really impressive how they would, with just the, uh, with just the decoder, just creatively come up with new tokens that it kind of is, is able to grasp the, 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 the whole meaning of, of whatever your input was, because mm -hmm. you can reference parts of your input, right? And, and all these things. So, yeah, I think, um, I mean, it's part of why we, we ramped up the LLM <laughs> uh, effort. So, so it's for sure useful, but it's yeah. not, uh, it's, it's kind of almost an overkill for some, some of the yeah. applications. Just things you do yep. too. Right. Um, yeah, with there, there's also a lot of discussion going on with regards to AGI. Um, and um, mm -hmm. oh, is this AGI? I, I remember I heard Lex Friedman talk to Sam Altman about um, discussing is is this thing conscious? So they, in in all seriosity, discussed matter of consciousness, um, which I found a bit ridiculous, to be frank. Um, and um, well, but the 
the I, I think this long standing dream it's it's but it's it's a dream basically but I think humanity still undecided whether this is a nightmare dream or uh, actually a real dream um but it's yeah, how close are we? What do you think? So there's the wild. For those who don't know, there's like a long, uh, a long history of weird predictions. When <laughs> singularity, which is the point when age is still updated, here, and, and it was updated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, and and I gave I gave a speak at the bank a couple of weeks ago um, on t t trying to frame and sort of give my view on the development and so on. Then I showed a graph um, showing the w winter summer cycle. And it and its headline its headline was I copied it from 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 somewhere. Uh, it was like AI has a long standing history of being the next big thing. <laughs> so and I find that to be that a good summary of how, what happened. So uh, are, are we sort of deorbiting um, this sort of up and down with with popularity and and are we closer to AGI? I mean, yes, we are. Of course, the closer we are. But how close are we actually? In it? Um, un until we reach HR. Yeah, I think the goalpost has moved quite a bit because before, like a couple of years ago, people were tar uh, talking about uh, what's it called, uh, the Turing test, where yeah. you have mm -hmm. your interaction with the, with the machine and you cannot tell that it's a machine. Mm -hmm. I think we're way past that point, which yeah. like a couple of years have yeah. would have been accepted. This is this is actually something is that it. resembles AGI. But uh, no, I don't. Think There's no clear, clear definition of done. So as you, no. as you, as always in software development, no, and I don't think it's that. To me, it's not that interesting what the exact definition mm. is. I mean, also with the whole consciousness. Yeah, I don't. I don't care too much, to be honest, of of what it exactly is. Um, it's kind of fun to think about it, but but to me, that's not a. As you said, there's no clear definition, so there's no. There's also no. What do we gain if mm. we can say, well, we have now AGI? Mm. What does it change? It doesn't change. It's just a, a check mark somewhere, mm. right? It's it's not. You cannot do more. You can. It's. The actual thing is defined by what it can do. Yeah. If you give it a label or not, it doesn't matter to yeah. to the thing. So to me, this is okay. This is. I think it's sapient, kind of, because it memorizes basically the whole internet mm. and can and can uh, uh, can make sense out of it. But yeah, all all the other cases. But then again, I don't know if you if you start. We are we are super bad at at kind of imagining one change that's coming. Like so, people are super bad at extrapolating. Like if you say what what's the world gonna look in ten years, they they severely underestimate how yeah. different it will be. Yeah. Even if they look back ten years and think, oh yeah, it was completely different. And the other thing is, it's hard to imagine if you have something that is so much smarter than you that you cannot even comprehend. Right? You can you can understand a person or a thing that is maybe twenty percent smarter than you, or maybe twice as smart as you. But if you have something that has just all the information and it's just a hundred times smarter. See, yeah. Like not even, it's like, who was it? I think Neil deGrasse Tyson said it when you have an alien uh, uh, invasion and you, you think of your difference between a human and a small whatever bird or worm. Like if you talk to about your taxes to the worm, you don't, you don't <laughs> even, yeah. It, yeah. you cannot do anything with your information. Yeah. But the same goes, I mean, we are not at the at the ceiling of yeah. of intelligence, so you can you can easily extrapolate to somewhere up that is yeah. just as as much above us that we are to a a, a worm or a yeah. or whatever a goldfish, <laughs> whatever that happens. I don't know. It's yeah, we're actually landed now. We're in the discussion. We landed uh, in the middle of this whole f f philosophical uh, kind of thing that that's around that as well. And I and I and I was always surprised that everybody thinks that. Um, a technology that's more intelligent, way more intelligent of us. But basically, two things: uh, are we really realizing it? Because I mean, the well, given given the idea that being um, intelligent also means being rational, um, the most rational thing to do would be if if I would be like 
um, hundred times more intelligent than the average human, um, would I try to fight the ones that are not intelligent or would I sort of try to fly above the radar uh, of, of, or, or you just don't care? Threat? Yeah. So we, that we, can, we don't care about ants because they, exactly. I mean, as long as they don't yeah. bother us, yeah, we, we don't do that, but yeah. we don't, we don't strive to dominating all the ants in the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not, yeah. That uh, no benefit. Exactly. There's so much it's ahead. Just, it's very weird. So, yeah. so that I, I'm asking why everybody thinks that that this um, that like the main priority. It, it sometimes it sounds like um, the moment the intelligence realizes it's it's way more intelligent than humans. It this is like the the very firm, also like inevitable decision that that means it needs to kill all humans. <laughs> Somehow. That's somehow related. And I think we just watched too much, too many science fiction movies. No way. Um, we we might not care to dominate all the ants, but we cultivate cows for food. So then we go into the matrix thing where yeah. the machine can harness human, I don't know what, <laughs> resources from us. Yeah. Then it, the table <laughs> starts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. But look, um, there's also people saying, Life in Matrix gets bad if you get out of the Matrix. So as long as you're in the Matrix, everything is fine. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> seemingly fine. <laughs> who who fine. can tell this is not a simulation yeah. um, already? So um, it, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, but I find, in, so this is the one thing I, I, I find weird, to be frank. I, I mean, it's not that I told that I would not share these ideas in in bait in parts so i i could actually understand why people are talking about this but on the other hand um it, it don't seem very rational to me that this will this is the inevitable consequence of having a super intelligent system the, the, the other thing is why does everybody think they're robots because you know in in media that was like it, all the the all the the i, I think this just a problem of finding a stock photo that matches for your article. And then you always get this, these mean robots. And uh, I, I would not want to be in robotics right now because this is like, I mean, they have nothing to do with the latest development in AI and they, they sort of get ba bashed for at least visually. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it's again, I, the same thing that, that we, that we relate to stuff that is human like. Right. Yeah. Even the robots have legs and whatever, then that's the one we drive to. And that, that's the one we can think, I had this like human, the Terminator kind of thing. It is a, it has a human shape, so we can relate to it. So people, I mean, it's also like how the media works. I do want mm -hmm. clicks, right? Sure. If, you, if you have a toaster with the super intelligent, no one clicks on it. But if you have like a mean looking mm -hmm. humanoid robot, people, people, people know and they are engaged. Sure. So, uh, do you think there's a possibility that there is a, is a super intelligent system and we just don't see it? No, at the moment. Yeah. I mean, like on Earth, on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. Like, wouldn't that be logic? That if a system gets way, way more intelligent, that it sort of, of tries to downplay its own role, uh, and in the background, why would it? Because it's, if it's so far ahead, it, it, it wouldn't just care. It wouldn't care if we realized that it's there. Like if it's like if it's maybe a step ahead of us, then yeah, then it's like I don't want to give away my advantage, maybe. But if it, if it's far and beyond, just don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, who cares if the humans find out? If if, if yeah. the humans cannot stop me, I. I then let them know. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, how do you see the development of 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 AI for the next ten years? I know that's a very very broad question, but uh, we've, I, I was talking a lot about all software must become become uh, AI software um, for for like ten years, mm -hmm. and people were laughing at me and and arguing with me. But but now I got a lot of feedback from people that wrote those articles basically say, well, maybe you, you were not so wrong. <laughs> um, and, um, I think as said many times, um, I think the, the, uh, the, 
the use of AI uh, to improve the interaction between humans and machines is something which is becoming more and more relevant. And I now don't think we're we have progressed far there. And so with all this uh, very mundane interaction with software, it's like we need to click there, need to click there. So it's like a tool to do something. Whereas in the future, software must become a companion that's sort of working together with you and needs only really needs the relevant input to to do to help you doing the next steps so of actually producing the work. Um, so how, how do you see um, where, where we are there? Do, do you share this view or um, sharing the view on in that we that it will just be some kind of a background thing that well just that, helps that, you? Let's maybe pinpoint it to or pin it to one one. Uh, the, the, so the general statement be all software in the future must be AI based software. Or has at least a, a, a AI component. Yeah. Probably. That's it's not cool if you agree then because then I mean <laughs> Okay, then <laughs> we've been on just kidding. Ed no, well yeah, I guess, I guess you yeah. I mean what we see now like what people usually do now, we have a breakthrough, but the models are gigantic. Training them is super costly, but in two years from now this will be super cheap. It'll run on your phone. Um or or on your watch, and I think maybe not exactly what we're mm-hmm. doing now, but it it would be so much easier to deploy because of the whole AI, also the infrastructure, the the, the frameworks that where it's run uh, ran on, uh, is is still nowhere near mature. So there's a lot of companies that make this more more um, accessible, mm-hmm. also to run on 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 IoT whatever so it will be it will be almost everywhere i think i'm i'm, I'm pretty sure and it doesn't have to be like a super fancy thing yeah. i can just do like convenient stuff in the background so you don't you don't you don't even realize it's it's kind of doing something smart but yeah i mean yeah, it's just so convenient mm-hmm. it's so convenient for so many things mm-hmm. and and this is now so the, the to get back to the gpt thing it's I think it's, it will be enabling a lot of people to do a lot of super creative stuff. Mm-hmm. Like people will build products that probably violate all kinds of <laughs> ethical things or 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 um, whatever legal uh, legal terms with uh, with everything. Um, but yeah, it it will be super interesting. Now we're in the. I think what 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 also kind of enabled the whole. Pro- progress now in the LLMs is that we just have a gigantic pool of data with the internet. And it's just language, right? So you can basically collect data for free up until now. Like <laughs> Twitter said they, they should pay, I don't know, what's 40K mm-hmm. uh, a month or so to get access to the data. Reddit will do it, so everybody will do it. Um, the EU is stepping in with, with data protection um, as they should. And it's so I think we'll we're kind of with the language. We're in a safe space that this all runs on the computer. Right? You interact with the computer, so it's a very controlled environment. You have a shitload of of training data with the whole internet that people just put in for free, and now they collect it. And then, uh, in an interesting twist, they yeah. now don't pro they they forbid you like OpenAI forbids you to train your models on their stuff. But they they yeah uh, they, they know why. They know why. <laughs> they know why. But, but it's it's kind of hypocritical a little bit to that extent sure. that, that they that they just harvest everything. So I think there will be people will be putting some brakes on on the progress because everyone will want to have um, these companies paying for their data. Mm. So access to data will be very limited, um, and this is also legally pretty interesting. I think because now there's a couple of law lawsuits open. And depending on what's decided, I mean, in the worst case, if 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 OpenAI loses all their lawsuits, uh, they need to delete models. They have to pay a lot of uh, a lot of fees and and are not allowed to to train the model. Uh, it's actually very risky. I heard a rumor that they, or I don't know if this is really a rumor, but sort of a um, story about that they started to panic um, to be very quick. OpenAI, yeah, and that they they actually got. This is more or less like an over over weekend decision that they started to do, actually release Chat GPT uh-huh. because they needed to yes 
create, uh, pu create momentum. public momentum yeah. in order to get funding. Yeah. And then they also were like afraid to that there were competitors doing a similar stunt. Um, so they want to get advantage of the first, for, yeah, first mover advantage basically. Um, and and the other thing I heard also is like there's that uh, just things are heating up um, among around Elon Musk basically um, because obviously he's pissed. Um, and uh, that, he's always pissed. Yeah, that's true. But uh, we actually got got some very good reasons to be pissed, and or I mean, has, from his view, and like from a Twitter CEO perspective, or. Or from which perspective? No, but actually that the story that he sort of donated uh, a bit of money or yeah. quite a bit substantial hundred uh, million, I think. And or, then and then and then they sort of changed the whole thing and 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 in the end, uh, um, you know, there's this Microsoft versus or Bill Gates versus versus Musk thing, which obviously or seems to be a very personal um thing heating up and mm -hmm. um, what they act I just I just heard this. This is not like and that they're actually um, preparing sort of an action, a business action clause lawsuit uh, against. I'm sure against it's open. Yeah, uh, in in on, on the on the dimension of data, yeah, yeah, which is which is which you will. I mean, if they totally lose this, they, we did eventually will need to shut down the whole thing um, yeah. until the data situation is clear. And but um, what. <laughs> And I mean, the main thing is that not cool for nobody. I think. Yeah. I, I don't like it. No, not. But not cool, and especially I think it. They 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 showed how to do it, right? So mm. now, if you, like, if it would completely shut down with with regulations, I think it will just target the wrong people, mm. and the, the the ones that at least try to be ethical about it, yeah. and try to, yeah. try to um, kind of have this model aligned with the. The values, and that's also something that, that I give credit to Altman because he said they, as as OpenAI, have kind of a responsibility to absolutely to to make sure that the model is not yeah. or not easily being misused for yeah. for for harmful stuff. But yeah, it's it's a whole way then to to go just from the language domain into like the real world, as you mentioned, the robotic yeah. thing, like moving uh, in the three well, D world, you know. What what it, what it, what is funny is actually it reminds me at all called prohibi prohibition um, times uh, where actually where there where there was no prohibition of alcohol. I mean, there was alcohol is a harmful thing, of course, um, but not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then uh, I mean, <laughs> if it, once they started to pro prohibit uh, alcohol, uh, that means that meant that it got very attractive for for the bad guys to to do something in that space and um and that could be the same if we get more and more regulations um that could actually motivate the wrong people to do do criminal things around data uh, because it, because now as you said the day open ai showed it can be done yeah and it, it obviously is not well, that's a tricky tricky statement but it's obviously not so much rocket science to do with. So if you have a lot of money, you can basically hire people to do a lot of to do engineering stuff. effort. Um, so it's not that you have need to have this one single technology, and if you have it, you, it's, you can either do it or not. It's more like yeah, you can replicate that. Um, no, there's still some parts that don't scale that well. Hmm? Like there's still parts of it, like you pre-train the model on the whole internet, but then the the whole alignment where you have to provide it with. With actually human curated data mm -hmm. to to improve it, that's not super scalable. So it it is still kind of a large large human effort involved in in mm -hmm. in, in in training something like like mm -hmm. GPT. I think it's also like where a lot of the cost went to just have yeah tons and tons of people of ranking answers, uh, providing um, answers well, to just have then the the model. Um, yeah, behave the 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 way that they want it. So it's yeah. not. It's it's still gonna be expensive, even though if you have the data, you still there's still a lot of work. Sure, so it's expensive. Not, it's not yeah. like a a, a, a one yeah. person in the garage. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Yeah. I was more thinking like, okay, if if you if if you you can actually that makes selling illegal data interesting mm -hmm. uh, commercially. That's that's one one development that could come out of that, 
and then there will, and then there will be people that have enough money to buy it and to do uh, yeah em employ bigger teams um so it's yeah um yeah that's also why i think this moratorium thing is is more or less a joke yeah um it yeah and it, you don't you don't gain anything out of that um unless maybe more time for Elon Musk to set up his own AI company. <laughs> yeah. It, um, but it always depends, right? I mean, you don't want... I think it's a wrong decision to block kind of the research part of it um, because that's historically never been a good idea to, mm -hmm. to kind of put some caps on, on science. But on products, I think it can make more sense, right? Because... It's it's what you actually then do with it, right? Because mm. we have it's it's like um, weapons are regulated, right? But, mm. but you can do science about. I mean, there's there, there's some gray area, like with the, with mm. the <laughs> interesting work they do in the at the Wuhan Institute uh -huh. of, <laughs> of uh, virology to uh, whatever. I forgot the term now. The what they do? Gain of function. Ah, yeah, gain of function. So um, yeah, I th I think to start the discussion, it's a, it's a good a good thing. I don't mm. think it's it's either feasible to to cap science on this or a good idea. Um, but but for products, it's, it's, it's well, yeah, and, and it worked. I mean, there's there's there actually it it uh, encouraged people to discuss um, threats and um, yeah. how do we move forward with this technology and yeah, it's interesting. Well. Um, with regards of training cost, um, what I uh, what amazes me more and more is how training cost seems to fall. Um, I remember when we started that we were looking up like cost ratios for trainings and compute and things, and I am um, I'm I'm not the best um, unit economics calculator, um, but I understood it to to that degree that certain things are out of our reach as a, as a small company of 40 people. Um, and, uh, and now more and more things I realized, um, also through the interaction with you guys that, um, the training cost is coming down is, is there sort of a Moore's law, um, in, as we have with, with Syracuse developments, it, is there something similar in AI happening? How do you see this? So it's I mean it's a mix. It's a mix of compute power uh, becoming yeah. um, less expensive, but then also methodology and trainings and data uh, selection, etc. Um, yes and no. So what came down now? Like you can training like pre-training these LLMs um, on the whole. Let's say the whole internet is still expensive. It's still like True. 10, 20 million. Yeah. Once you have this, it's relatively cheap to make something like to fine tune your model because this thing then will, you ask it for, I don't know, an opinion on topic A and it will either reply with a Wikipedia mm -hmm. article or with a 4chan mm -hmm. rant or a angry Reddit uh, reply. Um, but to then kind of fine tune, that's the thing that got cheap. Yeah. Um, so all those cheap trainings on also these models that now come out that every every other week um they they just have a highly trained very expensively trained base model on top of it yeah. so so once you have this you you can do a lot of things with with uh, not a lot of uh, money but on the other side we still have the um compute and data volume and more parameters in the models is king mm -hmm. because what you also see is that um for for these bigger models, you have these these capabilities that uh, that emerge. They say um, that it, all of a sudden it can do something that it couldn't do before. And then when you scale the model down, no matter how much training data you feed it, it cannot do, let's say, algebra or arithmetic, simple arithmetic, and that it requires a certain size. Still not understood if really size is is the thing to do or the thing that's necessary. It doesn't look like it, but but so to some extent we're still at the at the more more uh, parameters and more um, more data is king thing. There was this uh, paper at Chinchilla 
that they they kind of come up with a scaling law for for uh, these models where mm -hmm. they said um, actually the models are currently um, very much under trained so you could feed it a lot more data and train it for long and it will then still mm -hmm. still improve um, so yeah to some once once you have one of these really expensive base models um, you can do you can do with with very limited um, efforts in a few hours of training you can do a lot of stuff but it, that still requires to someone having produced that that really basically the whole internet compiled yeah. into a uh whatever billion parameter model yeah. so this is yeah you, you mentioned the 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 new and also the open source uh models uh initiatives coming out so um um yeah i looked at most of them are not so open source because then they're trained on not open source data and okay. then you cannot like op open source but for example not available for commercial purposes yeah. right so it could still be open source but then you kind of commercialize it or you have yeah. to open source your code so yeah so I, and I, I know you guys um you're looking at, at at all these new things with a lot of your yeah quite a quite a lot so what is your feeling is this uh will is this helping um um for, for for the whole software industry, I I think yeah the whole open I mean that's that's also the thing that uh, interests me like this the like getting things more efficient and um, yeah the whole open source doing doing stuff um, publicly um, visible I think that helps a lot and that's that's also historically what helped software development like the open source uh, community did a lot of stuff so i think it's it's helping and i'm sure that there will be some great ideas that that come out um yeah i was i was also surprised how the big companies like published in the past published a lot of stuff mm. uh either in research papers i mean google kind of um provided the actual like algorithmic breakthrough in the transformer architecture that now kind of led to open ai just take it to 11 and th and, yeah. and build a build an awesome product yeah. that hurts them now but uh, that fundamentally the google it's yeah. a google invention yeah. that that made this all yeah. possible yeah so that's kind of cool and and the gay uh, keep mentioning this what they keep mentioning this in keynotes etc so yeah <laughs> as, as been put uh, the google's um, yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway. yeah rightly so i mean it must be yeah. impressing yeah but yeah, but it, you you can also see that it it took it took a few years, right, to get to this point. The, the the thing was published in 2017, I think. And so to realize that this is great, mm -hmm. and then kind of people actually to go into this direction just takes a couple of years to, but but transformer papers have been popping out for the last couple of years, like mm -hmm. the, right. Mm -hmm. So it's but it just takes time for people to basically switch focus to whatever they're doing and hopping on the, the transformer bandwagon in this mm -hmm. case and then kind of uh, accelerating this. But yeah, let's, yeah. Sometimes they, I was surprised on how open they are with some of the models that mm -hmm. they pull out. Um, sometimes they're not. Like um, the the Facebook guys, the meta, sorry, <laughs> remark, the meta guys. <laughs> um, they have the llama model. Um, and they make a whole deal out of it that it's um, available for everybody, but it's not really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah, I think we're we're gonna be in a in a in an interesting time. I think the the easiest time to get your hands on data and models this this will down, down die down pretty mm -hmm. shortly because mm -hmm. now people realize they can make money out of data. Yeah. They can make money out of these yeah. pre-trained models. Yeah. So now it was, it's kind of a Wild West yeah, kind of situation yeah. at the moment because data is free or nobody knows and people just take the risk and, yeah. and just scrape it. Yeah. But this will, this will, this will come down. Yeah. And also we are, we're kind of, I think at the limit of, of the amount of data we have, like we, I think a significant amount of the internet is, is actually in these models. So there's no, yeah. it's not like we can add up tenfold more data to it because there just is not scarcity. Maybe maybe once the models can produce their own training data, but I don't know to what what kind of dynamics this this will yield. Yeah. yeah. But then there's the whole images and movies. So mm. I think that's the next step mm. is to go multimodal to include like audio, video, 
I think that's a, a big a big thing. So you can you can reason about images or videos, and then models have not figured out or uh, yeah causality. So you cannot the bad at judging like what is the cause and what is an effect. Like if you see uh, an image, um, so I think there will be a lot of research going in because that's also then that will be super cool once you once you have this like model interpretation of causes and effects as like parameters then you could like do interactive mm -hmm. like images always yep. like where you switch some i don't know you you add an effect somewhere in and then it reacts in in real time to 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 your mm -hmm. uh to your thing so i think that will be that will be kind of kind of cool and just cool yeah so a lot of still a long way to go too yeah, so I, I, with regards to your current work, what's the the thing you that you would wish to have solved? Um, solved? Yeah, I mean documents. Yeah, sure, but <laughs> in in terms of technological problems, I think uh, like parachute, parachute. Yeah, yeah, in general, from from your work. But what uh, if you? It's like you, I think you mean a genie in the bottle. If genie in the bottle would grant you one wish, um. yes. So we we um, we start to ramp up the, the the LLM thing, and and I think that's um, that's great. But we're also doing a lot of with graph neural networks that are also kind of emerging to be kind of a dark horse and next big thing uh, after the transformer thing. In the end, it's kind of very related. A transformer is kind of a special case of a graph neural network. But the one thing that the transformers have going for them is they are just based on text. So you can just read a text, mm -hmm. whereas graphs need the, the links. Mm -hmm. And so there's not that much like data available. Like we cannot scrape the whole internet True. to this. So um, I was also a mode for power shifts, more or less. That they're what? not. Yeah, I mean, for for the business, it's like okay, you, you can't just scrap the scrape these the, the the training data from somewhere. You actually need to produce it, which is costly. And yeah, I mean, there's hard to do. Yeah, there's some documents, data sets, but they're not not labeled, so you can do some of the things. But in general, um, yeah, how to leverage how to leverage open 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 data sets um, more. Uh, for us so that we can also get like this because yeah you know, in the end these 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 pre-trained models so that we could would have kind of this um this very powerful um document um pre-trained model that is just familiar with either these is uh, like ba text based uh, mm -hmm. documents but also with like tables and all that stuff um that requires yeah, also multimodality, which the, the document processing field has been going, at least in the academic uh, part, for, for also a while now. Um, and yeah, just synthetic data generation of, or, or just just being able to to maybe tra train on a subset. For example, if we take a, an example of, of addresses, like let's say we, we don't perform well on Finnish addresses, mm -hmm. right? But we have tons of documents uh, in, in German. So what we, would be nice if we could just train on just addresses themselves in Finnish, mm -hmm. let's say, and then this would automatically work in a document itself because it already knows yeah. addresses are somewhere on universes up there, but we don't have the yeah. the the actual thing. So yeah, and and yeah, making making it making it um, yeah. So so basically, also having the, one of these like powerful base train models. And then uh, you kind of have efficient like fine tuning um, that you can really just tweak tweak the model in, mm -hmm. in in some small ways to have it either for this use case or for that use case so that okay. that um, yeah that would be cheap to to actually add a new use case will be will be very fast and very cheap because you already have an understanding of any type of document yeah. and what kind of stuff appears in there. All right. So ultimately, that means. From a product view, that means um, getting rid of document types, right? Yes. Well, we. <laughs> yes, there's a some term goal in some sense. Well, I mean, uh, for for the whole information extraction part, we actually already don't care about document 
types, right? Mm. We we care about this is a, an address, sure. like yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, in 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 general, yes, I would say so. Well, still document types in terms of more in a sense of what what do I need to extract from this? Just yeah. having a catalog. Yeah. A document type is in the end it's just a label, and then yeah, the, whatever yeah. people want to extract from yeah. it is then a, a different different choice. But yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, so uh, I I see we already spent like almost an hour. Um, Andre, thank you very much for your insight. It got was very uh, se seriously uh, towards the end. <laughs> wasn't <laughs> planned. <laughs> no. no, thank you very much. And thank you for, yep. for your work and expertise. Thanks for having me. Thank you.